Thanks for clicking. The Toronto Regional Real Estate Board has released Toronto's real estate data for the month of July, showing a market that is slowing down substantially, with the benchmark average and median prices all dropping for the first time in 2023. The data showing a weekend real estate market was, or should have been, widely expected, as we saw headline after headline throughout July, showing a market that was quieting, with major increases in supply and a reduction in demand. Just a flesh wound. Indeed, the TRREB was quick to point out that although the market is softening, home sales remain elevated compared to last year. However, as we'll see today, affordability has changed by quite a bit since this point in time last year. And if Toronto is starting another real estate correction, it's starting out that correction at a much faster pace than it did in 2022. So what I want to do today is go over Toronto's real estate data for the month of July, take a look at changing affordability since this point in time last year, and then discuss how that change in affordability will affect the pace and magnitude of Toronto's real estate correction. StatsCan is set to release July's inflation data over the next few weeks, and that data will have a big impact on the Bank of Canada's rate decision coming up in September. We'll obviously have an update out on that data on this channel. Make sure you click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates. But for now, let's get into July's data. Onto the data. First up, the benchmark price. The benchmark price, if you'll remember, that's the price of a home, which represents the most popular set of features. The benchmark price in Toronto in June was $1,171,300. And that dropped down a little over 10k to $1,161,200. So we have a little over a $10,000 drop in the benchmark price in Toronto. And that's the first time that the benchmark price has dropped in 2023. And although the benchmark price dropped by only 10k, July saw a major decrease in the average price of a home in Toronto. In June, the average price was sitting at $1,182,000, and that dropped down over $60,000 to $1,118,378. That's a near $64,000 decrease in the average price in one month. Nothing to worry about. And the lowest Toronto's average price has been since March, when it was sitting at $1,108,000. And the median price of a home also saw a substantial contraction as well. The median price of a home, if you'll remember, that's where half as many homes sell for over that price and half as many sell for under that price. The median price in June was sitting at $1,010,000, and that dropped down below $1 million for the first time since April, and is now sitting at $974,000. That's a $36,000 decrease in the median price in just July alone. And although the benchmark average and median prices are all down, inventory in Toronto stayed relatively static when we look at the months of inventory measurement. The months of inventory measurement, the MOI, measures if no more homes came to market in Toronto, how long would it take for Toronto to completely run out of homes for sale? That number in June was sitting at 2.1, and that remained unchanged at 2.1 in July. With that said, in addition to the price decreases that we've seen, we're also seeing homes go for less over asking than they have in the previous months. When we look at the sales to list price ratio, which measures by how much over or under asking a home sells. So if a home is listed for 100,000 and sells for 105, the SLPR would be 105. The SLPR in June was sitting at 104 and that fell down to 102 in July. So on average, homes are now selling for 2% over asking price, which still isn't great for the average home buyer, but it's still the lowest level that it's been since April when the SLPR was sitting at 103. So the benchmark price is down 10K. The average price is down over $60,000. The median price is down over $35,000. Inventory has remained relatively static, but homes are selling for less over asking price than they had in previous months. All in all, we have a slowing real estate market. There's a difference of opinion. TRRB President Paul Barron said that it appears as though the sales momentum that we saw during the spring market has stalled. You think? And with interest rates and mortgage rates up and expected to stay that way for the foreseeable future, it doesn't look as though that momentum will be returning anytime soon. One year ago, Toronto's benchmark price was sitting at $1,057,500 and a decent five-year fixed uninsured mortgage rate was sitting at 5.24. Using minimum down payment requirements and zero debt, one year ago, the average home buyer had to earn $230,000 to be able to buy that benchmark home. Fast forward to this year and rates are up substantially. 
a decent five-year fixed uninsured mortgage rate from TD is sitting at 6.19%. Again, using minimum down payment requirements and a similarly priced benchmark home, buyers now have to earn $245,000 to buy that same house. So affordability is already much worse than it was one year ago as interest rates have risen substantially since then. And if we look at the data, we can see that if Toronto is starting another real estate correction, the pace of that correction is moving much faster than did the one in 2022. I can't, I can't do it again. <laughs> During the start of the 2022 correction, Toronto saw its first price decreases in March, when the average and the benchmark prices fell by 2.6 and 3.3% respectively and the benchmark price was still actually increasing. Fast forward to the numbers we just looked at today, and the benchmark price is already down by 1%, the average price is down by almost 5.5%, and the median price is down by 3.5% as well. All showing major decreases, especially relative to the decreases that we saw at the beginning of the 2022 correction. So, if Toronto is in for another real estate correction, and the higher cost of borrowing combined with the magnitude of the price decreases appear to support that idea, then we could see see prices come down a lot faster than we did in 2022. And I also think it's important to remember that although the benchmark price is sitting where it was almost one year ago to the day, that for some at least, the situation last year was a lot more optimistic than it is this year. If we look back to last year, the big six banks were forecasting a policy rate of between 3 and 3.5% 3 .5 by the end of 2023 and RBC was actually forecasting that we would be seeing a rate cut by the end of 2023. Fast forward to this year when we have the same benchmark price and bond yields are flirting with 4% for the first time since 2007 and all of the big six banks are forecasting a 5% policy rate for the remainder of 2023 and that we won't see rates hit 3.5 to 4 until the end of 2024. And, at least since we've been tracking them on this channel, the banks have proven to be very rarely overly pessimistic in their rate predictions. Rates almost always end up higher than that which was predicted. What would they have to gain? So, in summary, in July, Toronto saw its first major price decreases in 2023, with the benchmark average and median prices all falling substantially. If Toronto is in for another real estate correction, it looks as though this one could unfold much quicker than the one that happened last year. Rates are substantially higher, affordability has fallen amid those higher rates, and the outlook isn't nearly as positive as it once was one year ago. With all of that said, Toronto's real estate correction will be largely dependent on the Bank of Canada going forward, and we'll obviously continue to track the Bank of Canada and interest rates on this channel. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates, but for now, thanks so much for watching.